okay <clears throat> the same thing will apply in integers numeric values also because different data types will have different storage capability now text we already know string uh, character var char and enum now for numbers or a numeric data types there are three major data types that we can use one is integer the other one is fixed point and the third one is floating point in integer we call it int int right now what are integers whole numbers with no decimal point now can you give me example of integers any any uh, you know column name that you think should be integer salary age. salary age, will be age. decimal age, age you can write or age can be in decimal also but age is is a good example because salary you may earn let's suppose 80000 point 10 paisa okay okay the student ids quantity you cannot sell one and a half quantity right mobile number mobile number but i will take mobile number into character or var char because okay. there will be hyphens also plus sign yeah, also yeah yeah right so all your ids your quantities purchase numbers these thing will go under integers right so we write it int now integer is also split into five further categories tiny int small int medium int int and big int again because of different sizes if i am storing something as tiny int whatever number i am going to put it is going to take only one byte and what is the range of the number either it could be minus 128 to positive 127 or from 0 to 255 if i know that number that i am going to put will be less than 255 then i should go for tiny int instead of integer because integer integer is going to take four bytes for every row for example quantity sold you know that your quantity sold can never be more than 10 or 15 or 100 correct for one item no one can buy 255 items make sense at that yeah. point in time you can use tiny int to make sure your data table or the storage is well optimized now if you noticed for every other di different data types there are two figures that i have put one is negative and one is positive now what is this negative and positive those are known as signed and unsigned if the value that you are going to put is going to include both positive and negative values then we have to specifically mention that my data type is signed and if it is unsigned if integers are allowed to be only positive then i need to make sure my data type is unsigned so far clear this is unsigned and this is signed signed means i can add negative and positive values both unsigned means only positive values and integers data types are signed by default if i am not writing signed or unsigned by default that will be signed that means by default they can take negative and positive both the values now in quantity sold i will not choose unsigned reason being if someone is returning that should be negative quantity also right but for purchase number i would want it to be unsigned only so i will specifically mention integer data type and then i will write unsigned against it so far clear now i hope you know this answer why should not we use big int for every numerical data type which is integer to, to reduce size correct <clears throat> all right now next is fixed and floating point data types this is a little bit tricky but very important to understand now if you are storing let's suppose decimal numbers 10.523 now you have to mention two things whenever you are going to put fixed or floating data types okay so can you tell me how many digits are there in this number 3 5 1 2 3 four, 5 5 that yeah, is your point. precision that means it refers to the number of digits in a number the maximum number you can store maximum number of digits you can store in that particular column 
So precision is 5. And what is scale? The number out after the decimal points. Refers to the number of digits to the right of the decimal point in a number. So how many uh, you know decimal points do you want to see in your data? So far clear? Yeah. Yeah. Now this is how you will write decimal 5 comma 3. So for fixed data type, the name of the data type is decimal. Now precision is 5, scale is 3. So far clear? Yeah. Now there is a problem with fixed data type that it represents the exact values. For example, if I am typing decimal 5 comma 3 and someone is going to enter data as 10.523, it will adjust absolutely correct. But if my number is 10.5, then what it will display? 10.500 because I am saying my precision is 5 and my scale is 3. So it will show me 5 figures only. And it will show me 3 decimal places after the uh, dot. Now if my number is 10.5236789, what it will enter? 5.5 comma 3. 10.524 but okay. it will give me a warning the okay. warning will be that your number is greater More. than your precision and scale right so we generally do not use to be very frank we do not use decimal very often reason being we need to be very sure that my number is 5 only and after the dot or after a decimal there should be 3 digits only so we hardly use decimal Okay. Now, while deciding a data data type, let's suppose I'm only writing decimal 7. I'm not writing comma anything. This is equivalent to writing decimal 7 comma 0. What does this mean? That there will be no value after decimal. It will give me only 7 digits. Okay. Correct. Only 7 digits. Okay. So we can omit the scale, but writing precision is very important. It will give you an error if you do not write a precision. Now SQL has a synonym of decimal which is known as numeric. And decimal is going to be outdated. Very soon SQL or any other platforms might remove decimal from their library. Then you can only use numeric data type. Whatever we have learned for decimal, it is absolutely similar to numeric. Absolutely similar to numeric. Everything is same. Instead of writing decimal, you will write numeric, bracket start, precision, comma, scale. Clear? Yeah. Now, in floating, as the name suggests, again, we have two data types, which is, numeric is, again, I'm explaining that, we already know this, floating data types. Now, floating, we used it for approximate values only. When we are not sure how many decimal places will be there or what will be the precision of the number, then we use float. It aims to balance between the range and precision. <clears throat> now, if I am writing float 5 comma 3 and my number is 10.523, it will display me 10.523. But if my number is 10.5236789, what it will display me? 10.524 without a warning. In fixed, it will display a warning. In float, it will not display a warning. It will automatically round off the figure after the third digit. Fair enough? That is the reason why we generally use float instead of decimal or numeric. Yes. This is the difference between decimal or numeric and float. Fair enough? Yes. Now the last one is double for the numeric data types. Now double means double the storage, double the precision digits and double the uh, scale digits. Okay, so let's suppose you are storing a value of GDP. It's a very huge digit. You cannot store that in the single digit of precision. That means GDP value is definitely going to be of more than nine digits. Do you agree? Yeah. Right. And that is only the precision. And then in double, we can store it till double digit up to 99. So the 99 numbers, that is 1000000, we can store that in double. 
definitely if i can store the larger number it is going to take a larger size also make sense so yeah. for salaries for you know gdp figures we use double <clears throat> fair enough <clears throat> 